What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to use machine learning to cluster the stock market using k-means clustering in python so let us get right into it so as always first things first this video is not investment advice this video is not financial advice don't listen to me when it comes to investing this video is purely programming advice machine learning advice uh, i'm showing you how to do certain things in python i'm showing you how to program i'm showing you how to do machine learning I'm not teaching you how to actually make investment decisions here uh, using Python. So you are responsible for your investment decisions. I'm not responsible for any losses or gains you make. Uh, and of course, this is a risky endeavor uh, being in the stock market. So don't listen to me when it comes to financial advice. This is just a legal disclaimer that I always need to include here. Now, having said all that, let's talk about what we're actually going to do in this video, uh, because maybe it's not so clear from the introduction. We're going to use k-means clustering, which is an unsupervised machine learning algorithm, uh, in order to cluster different stocks into different clusters. So basically, let's say we take the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, with the 30 companies there. And we want to know, okay, without having any labels, without saying, okay, this is automobile, this is uh, food, and this is tech or something like that, we just want to say... Um, those are the companies, find similarities and cluster them. We don't need to label these clusters. We don't need to say, okay, this is tech, uh, this is food. We're just going to cluster them automatically into similar um, categories. And of course you can do that with all sorts of things like a uh, balance sheet and you can do that with, um, uh, with financial statements and with uh, PE ratios and with PEG ratios and so on. <clears throat> but in this video today, we're just going to do it with the price movement. So we're going to look at the price movements of the individual stocks and we're going to find similarities. And based on those similarities, we're going to um, categorize them into clusters. So we're going to say cluster A are those companies. Cluster B are those companies. And we're not going to do it manually. We're going to have a machine le uh, learning model do it for us. So for this, we're going to need a bunch of libraries. First, we're going to use... Uh, CMD to install them or your favorite terminal of choice and we're going to say pip install by the way as always let me just reposition my camera so I'm not blocking the code later on there you go um, pip install and we're going to install pandas data reader like that we're going to install pandas itself like that we're going to install numpy like that and we're going to install SK learn or actually scikit learn and that should be it now I have all of those installed already so I'm not going to run those commands but this is how you install them and we're going to import pandas data reader as web we're going to import pandas as pd we're going to import numpy as np we're going to also import date time as dt which is part of the core Python stack. And then we're going to import a bunch of things for the machine learning stuff, which is from sklearn.preprocessing, we wanna have a normalizer because uh, stock movements are different and uh, the price range is a completely different one. So we wanna scale them down all between zero and one. We wanna have just the movements uh, so that it's easier to work with them. And we're going to apply this normalizer or use this normalizer in a pipeline. So from sklearn.pipeline, we're going to import pipeline, uh, actually not pipeline, but make pipeline as a function. And we're going to, of course, finally from sklearn.cluster, we're going to import k-means clustering, which basically just, uh, uh, I, I think I have on my website an explanation on how k-means clustering works. I also have, I think, a tutorial on this YouTube channel on k-means clustering. And in my books, I also talk about k-means clustering. So at this point, I'm not going to uh, explain what it does in detail. So what we then want to have... Oh, by the way, we forgot one module, uh, which is important to get the data. So we're going to also pip install yahoo-fin because we're going to need the ticker symbols of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So we're going to say import Yahoo Fin, or actually not import Yahoo Fin, but from Yahoo Fin import stock info SSI. 
There you go. And now what we do is we say companies DAO 30 equals SI tickers DAO. This is how we get the Dow Jones tickers. And um, yeah, that's basically it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to specify a time frame that we want to look for similarities uh, into. So we're going to say start equals DT date time. Uh, and let's say this is just DT date time now minus time delta. Uh, actually DT time delta days equals 365 times two, which is I think a pretty good time uh, to look at because of the recent events, I don't want to mention them because you know, YouTube doesn't like the words here. But because of the recent events, uh, the movements are pretty similar when the stocks are pretty similar when the companies are pretty similar over the last two years, look, just just look at the date down here. And you know what I'm talking about, if you're watching this in the future. So we're going to look at that and the end is going to be today. So date time now. And uh, what we're now going to do is we're just going to get all the data into one data frame. So we're going to say data equals web data reader. And we're going to use a list of company tickers. Company, uh, or actually companies, Dow 30 in this case from the Yahoo Finance API from start to end. So we're going to get all this information here. And now we're going to actually just only look at the open and the close values because we want to know, okay, how similar are the individual movements. So we're going to say open values are going to be NP array. And we're going to get from the data that we just loaded the open values. Now it's important that we need to transpose this because we need a different format later on. So we need to say dot capital T for the transposed version. And we're going to say close values is data close. There you go. And now what we want to do is want to know the daily movements. So we want to know, okay, how much is the difference from close to open. So in order to get the daily movements, we say close values minus open values. And then we can also sum up the movements uh, if we're interested in them, but we're not going to do that because uh, actually this is not so relevant for the actual uh, final uh, clustering, I think at least. Um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to define a basic normalizer, we're going to have a clusterer, I, I wanted to call it classifier, but it's not a classifier. Uh, we're going to um, define this object that is going to do the clustering for us, we're going to make a pipeline. And then we're just going to predict the clusters for the individual companies. So what we're going to do is we're going to say normalizer equals normalizer. And then cluster, clustering, uh, what could we call it cluster, let's just call it cluster, clustering model, if we can call it like that. Clustering model is going to be k means and the amount of clusters uh, depends on what we want to have. So n clusters is a parameter that we specify in order to say, okay, how many clusters do we actually want to have? So if we have 500 companies, for example, if we look at 500 companies, maybe we want to have more than just two clusters, because we want to cluster them into five different categories into 15 different categories, uh, without labels, of course, but maybe we want to have just differences there. Maybe n clusters should be the uh, amount of industries that you're expecting to have. Um, in this case, we're just going to specify a variable up here so that we're a bit more dynamic. Clusters equals five, we're going to start with that. And clusters is going to be equal to clusters. And the max iteration, I'm going to set it to, I don't know, 2000 or something like that. Then we're going to have a pipeline. And or actually, let's just set it to 1000. I don't think that we need to, uh, too much here. Pipeline is going to be make pipeline with a normalizer and the clustering model that we have. And the labels in the end, or actually first we need to, to fit the pipeline. So we're going to fit the pipeline on the data that we have. Um, but it's actually not data because we want to fit it on the movements. We want to fit it on daily movements. And then we're going to predict on 
the individual values uh, what what the labels are. So we're going to say labels equals pipeline dot predict, not pre processing predict, we're going to predict the um, daily movements. So now we have the clustering, the only thing that we need to do now is we need to uh, actually map the labels to the tickers because now we daily movements is just uh, an array of values. So we don't have a ticker symbol there. So we're going to create a results data frame, which is going to be PD data frame. And we're going to have in here. Oh, come on. We're going to have in here the labels. So labels is going to be labels, or we can actually say clusters, 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 and the tickers is going to be list of companies DAO 30. And in the end, we're going to sort these values by the clusters. That is it. And we're going to print the results now. Now there's a little problem with this script. Uh, and this is the fact that sometimes it's not going to load individual ticker symbols. This is not a uh, not a problem with the script, but a problem with the Yahoo Finance API. Sometimes it just says, okay, couldn't load that specific ticker symbol. So uh, we're replacing it with NAND values. And if that happens, you just need to rerun the script a couple of times until it works, because otherwise, uh, you're not going to be able to work with them. And what we have here is the Dow Jones uh, Industrial Average Index clustered into five different class uh, clusters from zero to four. Uh, you can see, for example, what do we have here is this this is Walmart, I think, and Procter and Gamble are in the same cluster, we can see JP Morgan, and Goldman Sachs two banks, uh, I think this is Bank of America, maybe even uh, we have those in the same cluster, we have Microsoft Apple in the same cluster, which makes sense we have uh, IBM and Cisco. And I think this is Intel maybe in the same cluster. So it's not that stupid. Um, but we can also go ahead and specify our own companies. Now I'm not going to change or actually I'm going to refactor this name here uh, to be companies or company tickers, and we're going to specify our own tickers here. So we're going to just say, let me see the list that I have chosen before. Apple, and Facebook, and Nvidia, for example, and Tesla, and Abvi, which is a pharmaceutical company and tattooed chef, which is a food company, McDonald's, which you already know, Carnival Cruise Line, which is a cruise line company, Microsoft, Goldman Sachs, and JP Morgan. So let's say those are the stocks that we're interested in. Uh, and let's reduce the number of clusters to four. And we should get some pretty decent results for that, hopefully, um, because then we should see that the companies that are similar are clustered together. And if they're different, they're mostly not clustered together. Now you need to keep in mind, though, that the only thing that we're actually looking at is um, the only thing that we're actually looking at is the price movement. So we're not actually looking at uh, balance sheets or what the companies are doing. We're just looking at the price movement similarities here. So still, it works quite well, because we have four clusters, we can see pharmaceutical got an, uh, its own cluster, food got its own cluster, even though McDonald's uh, managed to not fall into the food category. So maybe that's the only thing that doesn't make too much sense. But you can see JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs and Carnival Cruise Line, which are more conservative, uh, conservative companies are in the same category. And you can see which I think is impressive. Microsoft, Nvidia, Tesla, Facebook and Apple, the tech companies are in one cluster together. So it makes sense to or it kind of makes sense to cluster 
individual companies based on their movements because you can see okay uh, this block of companies is moving in a similar way and another block of companies is moving in a similar way whereas for example this company here is moving in a quite different way so this is something that you can do in python to support your investment decisions if you want to so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.